Here we are then, you've tuned in to Wayne's Electrical once again and coming up in front of the camera right now uh, we've got a Luden outdoor weatherproof IP66 I think it's somewhere in the round about there, IP66, IP68 maybe uh, yes, unswitched one this British Standard 1363 okay. uh, I've got a plug and a socket there there's the plug, there's the socket. We will be going into it in this video, and there we are. Now, these sockets, they are available, or used to be, used to be available in unswitched socket, which is this one, and switch socket. Now, I say used to be because in recent times, Luden have remodeled these, so that uh, the, the cap on these, it lifts up now, Instead of it being screw-on and having the chain, uh, it just lifts up. And uh, the plug, similarly, you can see that's threaded in there. If I can get a zoom going on that for you. Okay. There you go. You can see a thread inside there. Uh, on the newer ones, a little power zoom, it's just, you plug that in, give that a twist, and it's, it's in the socket. Okay, now the annoying thing about that is these plugs are not compatible with the new sockets. And similarly, if you've got, uh, you know, an appliance with this on it, and you go and put it into the new socket, it won't, uh, it obviously won't fit because this ring is not compatible. And similarly, if you've got an installation where you've got a load of these and you want to extend the system, and you go out and buy one of the new ones, uh, you will find that, uh, obviously speaking, if you've got appliances with these on, uh, the the plug won't go into the new socket because of the being compatible. Okay, so that's a bit annoying. That I do not know why Luden had to restyle them because this design has been around for absolute decades, and uh, you know it's proven its worth, proven its worth over the to over the years, and uh, there was really was no need to restyle it. I've got a feeling part of the reason why they did restart it is because sometimes these caps are known to go missing and this little chain, and the little rivet in there, uh, it, it drops out and whatnot and the, the cap goes missing or worse still, uh, someone unscrews it and then yanks the chain and steals the, uh, you know, flipping mindless vandals basically, they steal the cap. And, uh, but with the new ones, it's uh, it's fixed on there, and it just lifts up, rather much like the uh, the British Standard 4343 sort of arrangement, with the, the, the lift up flap cover. Now, let's go into looking at these in a bit more detail then. Unscrews. You see how, many, how much I've got to turn that to get that off, and it's still not come off. There you go, it's off now. There's a rubber seal inside there, you can see the thread in there. It will zoom on that for you. There you go. So you can see the, se uh, the rubber seal in there, and the thread. It's uh, going all the way round in there. And there we are. A little bit dusty. Should clean that out a bit. Uh, this actual particular plug and socket normally just sits upstairs in the cupboard. I haven't used it, and this plug sits in there, which probably explains why that cap's a bit dusty in there. Now, we can see the socket on there. Now, to obviously speaking, the best I can use this. That pin arrangement on there is uh, pretty familiar. And yes, you can put any standard 13 amp plug in there. However, if you want that to thing to be weatherproof, you do need to use the proper plug. It's metallic, it's a decast aluminium one. The later ones, this ring on here is plastic. 
But on the early ones, it was actually metallic as well. I don't know if I've got one of these where it's got the metallic ring on it. Uh, when, or should I say, used to buy these, I don't know if they ever sold them as a kit, okay, or, you know, what I call a set. And obviously speaking, a set would be the plug and the socket, or should I say a plug and a socket, but you can get the plugs just loose. I've got two more here. These are particularly expensive as well. I've got these, uh, these two on a job lot auction. Again, they've got the plastic securing ring on there, but these are solid metal decast aluminium again. Okay. Now, just to make these a bit more weatherproof, if you've noticed, the outlet is facing downwards. It's not sticking up the back or facing upwards. Okay, so when you install this on the wall, you do need to make sure that the outlet is the correct way up and not something silly like that. Because if that's up the wrong way, then when you put the plug in, that's going to be facing up in the air like that and you're going to get water in there. Okay, so you do need to install the socket the correct way up. In the event that uh, these 20mm threaded conduit holes are not lined up, let's say you wanted them to be horizontal like that, so you've got one there and the other one there, there's a blanking plug there, you can just remove that, it unscrews. What you can do is these three screws on here, one, two and three, you can loosen those, and obviously speaking, being 120 degrees apart from each other, you can take the front off, Rotate it around, or should I say, rotate the back box so that it's then horizontal on the wall, and then the socket, take that out, turn it around so it's the correct way up, and reinstate it on there. There are a few positions available, and I do believe, obviously speaking, one of them is with the, the openings vertical, and I've got a feeling the other one will be sort of like that way, like that way. Uh, I don't think you can actually have the openings horizontal. If you do, then the actual socket will be either like that or like that. So I don't think you can actually have the openings horizontally. Okay. So there we go. But with this 13 amp one, it is particularly important that the outlet is the correct way up. Quite simply because on there the outlet's facing downwards on the plug. That there is actually a sealing locking nut. What you do with this, if I'll take this out, obviously speaking, when wiring this up, you pass the flex through that first, but in there is a rubber bung. Okay, you can see that's threaded on there. And it's got like a little taper on the end of that. Let me get a zoom on that for you, a little power zoom. You can see it's slightly tapered. And when you screw that in there, it presses up against that rubber bung. There you go, you can see the hole in there, how small that is. And as you tighten that down, it presses up against that metal little ring in there. Squashes that in there, and as it does so, it, it, the hole closes up and bites the flex. Okay, that's just moved in there. Okay, let me get the ring out. There's the little ring I was saying about. The rubber bung, they, again, they're a bit difficult to get out of there, but they, they are removable. Oh, and this one's actually wanting to come out. There we go. So I've actually removed the little rubber bung then. Come on, camera. Zoom on that. What? Is that going to? Or going to have to use manual? But you can see on here, though, you can see like these little cuts. And that is so that it... Exp it can expand and contract to the flex size that goes in through there. Now, I seem to think you, it's perfectly possible to get a one and a half millimeter cross-sectional area three core flex into that. Okay, maybe even a two and a half. Oh, I don't know, but that goes in there, of course, and it's important to make sure that's in there the correct way round, like that. Put the little metal ring in there. Like that, the metal ring's in there then. Let me tilt that down a bit and put it on manual. Oh, what? 
of like that's on manual now. That's not going to go out, so I can do that in and out. And uh, but you go, it's still it's still in focus. So yeah. So the metal rings in there. Then put the lead locking nut in. And a little tip with these: when you tighten this down, you shouldn't see the metal ring at the bottom. You, you can yeah, you, you can see the metal ring at the bottom, so it's not quite positioned correctly. It needs to go over a bit, just knock it and slap it about a bit until it goes into correct position. It is difficult to do, I will give it that. There you go, you can't see the metal ring in there now, so it's correctly positioned in there. And at this point in time, if there was a flex in you'd tighten that down. That hole in there would get smaller and smaller and grip around the flex. That in there is not a cord grip, I won't like to point out. That is just for ingress protection. Inside there, there is a cord grip internally. Let's take this out. A rubber seal. When this is obviously wired up and in use, you don't put that in there. This is just instructions for wiring it up. Let me get, the, get that on that for you. If you want to carry on reading that, press the pause button now. Okay, and similarly, there we go. If you want to carry on reading that, press the pause button now. So, there's our plug then. Rubber seal comes out from wiring. Screw up there for undoing it and there's your fuse. Obviously speaking, anything up to 13 amps. And fuses available are 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 10 and 13 amp. It's a British Standard 1362 of course. The plug itself is British Standard 1363 13 amps, 240 volts. Let me get a screwdriver and we'll have that out of there and uh, we'll have a flipping good look at it I think. Rightio then, so what we're going to do now then is have that internal workings out of that body and we'll have a look at uh, how it is in there. So first of all then, screwdriver, flat tip, get on that screw and whip it out. It is quite a lengthy screw, but you don't need to turn it too much. You can feel when it's loosened off. And there it is. So all the workings have come out then. There's that rubber rubber bung inside there. Okay. There is the hole, the threaded hole that holds all the internal workings in there. And there it is. What's that say on there? 0691 it says on that, on that sticky label. So, that could either be June 1991, or it could be the sixth week in 1991. Okay, so that's probably February then. There's our terminal, so wiring is up. Neutral, live and earth. Live, active, phase, hot, cold, what you like. Okay. Black or blue down there. Okay, black being the old British colours, blue being the new harmonised European colours. Up there, your live active face hot, call it what you like. That can be brown or red. Okay, red being the 
old British colours and brown being the new harmonised European colours. And up the top there is your earth one, if applicable of course. If it is then it will be green and yellow which is the harmonised European colours or the old British colours just green. So there we go. It's also interesting to note that the screw that goes through there, there it is, I'll take that out. It does come out. It is removable. It's got to twiddle it a bit. Right, you can see inside that hole there's a metallic part inside there. That metallic part, when you put the screw in and tighten it all the way down, that is actually the earth pin. Okay, this earth pin, that's actually part of the earth pin there. So when you put this plug in the socket, it obviously makes contact in the socket for earthing reasons, and this screw, which is all the way down here and in contact with that, this screw earths out this metal body. Okay, so there's something for you. So when tightening that screw up, it's important to make sure it's wound all the way in, and that this screw is in contact with that metallic part in there. Now, the one reason why I do like these... Uh, where is it? So that screw there, and that screw there. If you take this out, the whole plug falls apart. Okay, you can take all the plug pins out, you can clean it up and restore it, and all of that. And uh, it will be rude not to do it. You can actually strip these right down, clean it all up, and all that lot, restore it. And then put it all back together. So that comes off then. This grippy thing. This is the cord grip. Okay, that comes out as well. Okay, so that comes off. There's your cord grip there. I'm all zoomed in on that. I am a bit. There's your internal workings then. There's a neutral pin. That comes out. Neutral pin. See, so it's all removable. I'll press that back in. There's your earth pin. With that little side thing I was saying about. So that goes back in there. So yeah, these are completely strippable. You can strip them all the way down. Your live pin comes out with the fuse holder on it. Okay. Obviously speaking, you can get that out as well. But I'm not going to force that because there's a fuse in there at the moment. And it might bend that strip. But that, that can come out as well. So let me just put that back in there. There we go. That's back in contact with the fuse and it's in there. What would be interesting is that if that was a uh, that fuse said Luden on it, but I've never seen one. So there you go. So with these then you can actually pull it all apart, completely strip it down for cleaning up and restoration purposes. And there we go. So I've now got to figure out how to put this back together. Very easy. Again, do, do not put these back together without the cord grip in there. Just lift that up a little bit. Insert the cord grip mechanism. It does go in there, obviously. And tighten it down. And make sure you put it the correct way round. That's no good, is it? I did that deliberately, just so you can see that they can go in either way round. And there is a correct way and an incorrect way. So that goes back together like that then, make sure it's all neatly mated up. There's the cord grip, put the screws back in. So yes, like I say, these can be fully stripped down. Nothing, nothing stamped or glued or moulded or nothing like that. And that's what makes these really, really tasty. Now I cannot vouch for the new style ones, whether or not they're completely strippable. I'd like to think that they are, but there we go. Due to the expense of these, I'm not going to go out and buy one just to do a video on it. Okay. If you want me to do that, then yeah, sure. But by all means, flash the cash and I should go and get one. Fuse. Put it out and have a look at it. Probably just a generic fuse in there. Uh, 13 amp. Oh, it's a VF, this one. There it is then, VF 13 amp, 
Made in England, British Standard 1362. And that obviously goes in there. It's got a little Luden logo on it. Okay, don't ever put that fuse straight in there without the little cover. Okay, that little guard must be in place. So the fuse just clips in there then. Rotate it so that you can see the rating in there. Uh, there's the rating showing through the hole then. Plop it in. I'm pretty sure I can go either way up, but I like to do it with the little Luden logo up the top there. And now we shall reassemble the plug. There you go, that goes in there then. Little zoom. So that goes back in there. Put the screw in, making sure that screw is tightened all the way down so this metal body gets earth continuity. Twiddly, twiddly, twiddly. Now, when with this plug, when I stripped it down, you can do exactly the same with the socket. I won't do the socket in this video, no point. But you can strip the socket down exactly the same manner, pull all the bits out, clean it up, restore it, throw it back together. Now, a little bit later on in another video, I've got more of these coming up. Not so much these, what I've got here, but I've got 15 amp ones. Okay, they are... I've got 3 pin, 4 pin and 5 pin ones. Okay, if you don't want to miss out on those, whack the subscribe button right now. Just for the closing shot then, blood goes in the socket. Be rude not to. In it goes. Like that. Twiddly, 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 twiddly. And that is now tightened up. Make sure it's locked in there really well. The optimum ingress protection. And there it is then. It's got a big Luden logo on the back of it. Like so. There we are then. Now, if you enjoyed that one, what I would like you to do right now, is give it a big old thumbs up for that. Don't forget, there are other Luden plugs and sockets and accessories coming up a bit later on. And uh, there we are. So, for now on this one then, I'd like to say thanks for tuning in for watching another Wayne's Electrical Video Production, which is in full HD 1920x1080p, and uh, more later. Cheers for watching this one then.